I'm going to show you this sort of pitch shifting delay I just made here. And at the heart of this is the three tap delay, which is something I use all the time. I'm just going to show you, I'll leave this control panel open. But anyway, our overall delay is 384 milliseconds. And I just kind of determined that a few moments ago by ear because setting it longer seemed to be stupid. And, and the first tap is set at 100% of that, so that'll be 384 milliseconds when this is turned all the way up because these are the control time inputs. You can see as I'm uh, hovering over that at the bottom, you'll see delay time one, delay time two. And I do this all the time. I put a pot to control the delay time and I run it through a scale offset. And what you'll see here is that I'm limiting the lower excursion of the pot. The pot goes zero to one. So at zero, the output is 0.27. And at one, the output is one. So this goes all the way up to one when I turn the pot all the way up, but it'll only go down as 0.27. And the smoother is a low pass filter. The corner frequency is shown here. So the lower you set this, the slower the transition will be. And the higher you set it, the faster the transition will be. And then this pot control down here, this is the feedback. Okay, that's in, so that's the feedback gain control. That's a multiplying thing. So this will go from zero to whatever the, the loop feedback is. And I wanna show you how the feedback loop works here. I've added a feedback loop. And to add a feedback loop, you click on loop add. And what it does is it drops in two different blocks okay but i'm going to just start by deleting that highlight them and hit Control x to delete but i already dropped in a feedback loop here's here's the feedback loop it goes into the feedback input of the three tap and you'll see that there's a feedback gain of minus one db that's adjustable here so that can go all the way up to zero the the feedback comes from a low pass filter here that i've put here I've set that to the magical value of 1698.2 Hertz just by ear. And this comes off of the uh, pitch transposer up output here. So what this is doing is that the first tap is at 100% of the tap time, 384. The second one is at 50% of that. The first one goes through this pitch up down. And so this is an octave down and an octave up at the same time. And these come into a three to one mixer. So from this tap, the 384 milliseconds, when it's turned all the way up tap, you will get octave up and octave down. And then on the next tap, which is at 50% of that, which is coming in sooner, that doesn't go through anything. That just comes in here straight. And then these all go into a three to one mixer, which is controlled by pot two. So this is essentially the echo level and this controls the feedback and this controls the delay time and so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to just show you what this sounds like all right with a weird kind of stupid loop i have and i'm going to start with the delay turned down and i'm going to start with the feedback turned down i'm going to start with the delay time here turned down all the way let's see what happens okay i don't hear anything Okay, I'll turn up the pot. Okay, I'm starting to hear something. All right, so start to hear the pitch shifter there. So I'm getting kind of an organy kind of tone about that with a little bit of slapback kind of sounds like. I'm going to turn up the feedback a bit. notes because the pitch shift is inside the feedback loop it gets transposed out. As I bring the uh, delay time up, you'll see that a little bit more obviously. Alright, so you hear that? So there's a lot you can do with that. Okay, 
okay there's a couple other points I wanted to make here before letting you go one of which is that in this case I have the input simply coming from the left hand side I'm using a stereo wave file input which is mono which means that both of the channels are the same but you do need to supply a stereo input and then on the output here if you look at the control panel I have the mono checkbox selected and what that will do is that mixes both of the channels to one so that the output to left and right are the same and uh, you can turn that on and off but uh, I have a mono pedal and so there's no point in me developing stereo patches although sometimes I do unclick this because I want to test something out While developing a patch, sometimes you want to listen to just one particular signal. And so, for example, if I want to listen to the pitch down from the second delay, then I would temporarily route that to both sides. Now, keep in mind, I got to remember where the things that I had earlier were, but it's not that hard. So now. Okay. That is the pitch down. Now, what we heard at the beginning was the, the slope up of the pot signal going through this smoother. Remember, I, I told you about the smoother and how it controls how quickly the, uh, the three-tap delay is changed. So, so this is actually set very low. It's set all the way down. And so if I just do this... There's a little bit of pitch shifting when I change that, but not too much. If I really want a lot of pitch bend when I change the delay time, then I'm going to turn this frequency down. And you have to start and stop the simulator whenever you change something in a control panel because these do not update what you're doing in real time. So that's another important notice. The pots up here on the top will control the patch sound in real time, but the control panels do not. So you're going to have to start and stop the simulator to pick up that change. I like having that pitch bend. I don't know why. If I, if, I, if I put it on with some feedback, it really turns into a lot of fun. Alright, so that, that was a case where I'm just listening to the pitch up and down. So, so since I have this set to mono, I can, I can actually take pitch up and down and plug those into the two inputs of the output block. Since it's set to mono, they'll be mixed together. I'm just hearing the pitch level and that that bypasses the mixer on pot two so you see I can make that go up and down nothing happens okay but the uh, the delay time through the smoother is still set so again if I set the frequency on the smoother block really low then it takes a long time for the output to respond and keep in mind that I'm, I'm controlling the delay time input of, of these three things. To be honest with you, the three tap block doesn't generate code for any outputs if their pins are not connected. So the fact that I have this going to uh, delay line three is immaterial. It's not generating code because this is not connecting to anything. But if it were, then that would control that as well. And again, this is how I control three taps to scale together when you move the pot and they will scale together as you move that control. That's pretty crazy. Uh, okay, so then I'm just going to take the mixer output again and then back to the input and that was my original patch. And If I can, I always like to play with feedback at the edge of, you know, at the edge of sanity. 
and you got to be careful when you turn the gain up on the feedback loop but let's just see what happens <laughs> Pot up, that's as high as it's going to go. Now, see, that's with the uh, that's with the pitch up in the feedback loop. Another thing I could do is I could have taken the feedback loop from this other tap, and that will bring the other tap in. And now I'm getting the feedback loop not through a pitch shifter. We won't hear that shimmer anymore, but we'll get a different feedback, different delay feedback characteristic. <laughs> That's getting out of control, so I'm going to turn that down again. I have to stop and. Uh... Alright, so that's just with a lot of feedback there. 0.98, that's almost 100%. It seems like it's not oscillating out of control, but you really do got to be careful about that stuff. So, be careful. When you're turning up the feedback, okay? I promise you that, okay? Thank you.